Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit. That as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Psalm 23 The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, peace, and mercy, these good gifts from God our Father through our Lord Jesus Christ, be with us all. Amen. Hello, dear people of Covenant. It is an unexpected blessing for me to be with you all today as Reverend Medina continues to rest his voice. I am Pastor Shelley Nelson Bridger and the Executive Director for the United Protestant Campus Ministries in Cleveland. On behalf of UPCAM's Board of Trustees, student leaders, and myself, we are together so grateful for your long-standing support of our campus ministry, especially in times like these. For together, we serve college students across Greater Cleveland at Tri-C Metro Campus, Cleveland State University, and Case Western Reserve University. I also join you today as an ordained pastor in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, one of your full ecumenical partners, as we celebrate the gifts of God's Word and Holy Communion together. Today I give thanks for our shared partnership in the mission of campus ministry, for the privilege of officing in your interfaith center. We remain so grateful for you all and for this partnership we share. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter, and in this season of all things being made new because Jesus is alive. Alleluia! Today is also Good Shepherd Sunday. We hear today as people who follow Jesus have heard for centuries on this same Sunday that our all-powerful, almighty God is our Good Shepherd. And truly for many of us with ears to listen who grew up in America, Psalm 23 is our deepest well for knowing God as Good Shepherd. Yet today, before we dive deeply into the wellspring of this Psalm, what it holds for us, how we listen for it, what we receive from it, I want to set things up with a story of my own. Fresh out of college, with two years of adulting under my belt, my newlywed husband, Seth, and I decided we'd take the exciting leap and leave Ohio and head west to work and live in a national park. And then it would be on to seminary as we planned to study together. So we called our friends who lead the national program, a Christian ministry in the national parks. Seth told of his grand vision for a ski ministry in Jackson Hole, Wyoming for the winter. And Gordon, the deputy director said, Hmm, that site is closed. I have a different idea. What about Death Valley? 
Death Valley. Where is that? I asked. To go there? Did that make sense? Well, we prayed a lot over a springtime and almost nearly all summer, and God confirmed in small ways and great, this was the place. And so we announced our departure in July 2001 for that upcoming October. And then September 11th happened. Never before in my lifetime had there been such a time of deep tragedy and national mourning. I remember asking, will it be safe to travel? Does it even make sense to go? What will happen? I asked these questions then about an elective cross-country move. This week and in the months ahead, you and I, we will ask these questions. Questions like these, pray them, yell them aloud before God and toward God about a trip to the grocery. Whether we ought to sit in our doctor's waiting room. How best to return to work, even how best for our son or daughter to attend school this coming fall. If these are the questions in your head, knocking around there, keeping you up at night, you are not alone. I ask them as I don my face mask for groceries in search of more Honey Nut Cheerios. My boys, my family, we are unbelievably blessed to choose even a flavor. And now, like never before, we are living and teaching lessons of gratitude and privilege around the clock. Yet these questions, while they may feel ominous to some of us, for our friends, siblings, and neighbors across the globe, or just a zip code away, who live with far less, fewer resources and options, neighborhoods and governments, undeveloped, under-resourced, corrupt. Their everyday life requires, they ask and pray these questions every day. And so now in this global moment, we are closer together, we see more of one another's story than just mere weeks ago. My husband and I, we did choose to go to Death Valley, where we lived for four months and four days, working at Furnace Creek Ranch, leading worship on Sundays. It was an unbelievable and privileged time to travel, to experience America. When I first arrived, I spent my days off exploring a dry, barren desert, thirsting for green trees and green landscape. And then my viewpoint of this dry valley shifted one December day. I met a mom traveling with her children from her adopted hometown of Seattle. I love traveling here to Death Valley, she told me, because it reminds me of home growing up in Israel, how there is so much life here. I began to see Death Valley from this new lens she offered me as a valley of life, to study aquifers and natural springs beneath the landscape that gives water, how water is life, even as it's 80 degrees year round, a wellspring for our small community. I began to notice seed upon seed scattered across the desert. Millions of these seeds waiting for just a droplet of water to cause an explosion of green and wildflowers all in color. There is so much beauty to behold, beauty I would have missed if I had not spent time in that moment. 
the questions we carry, the new ones we will find and want to hold on to, we bring them into this moment, carried them into this very worship service this morning on Good Shepherd Sunday. And so I invite you now, with all these questions that you hold, to listen again to Psalm 23 from the common revised version, the common English version. Listen for how God is speaking now to us. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He lets me rest in grassy meadows. He leads me to restful waters. He keeps me alive. He guides me in proper paths for the sake of his good name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no danger because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they protect me. You set a table for me right in front of my enemies. You bathe my head in oil. My cup is so full, it spills over. Yes. Goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the Lord's house as long as I live. Whenever I go searching for answers to my what and why questions, I discover again that God is the one who leads me back to ask who. God who is control of this moment. God is the who that is all powerful, knowing more than my human self. God is who is far greater than my worries and concerns. God is who answers my questions and yours. He does this over and over again, I have seen it. God is who gives us the very strength to release these questions unto God to lay them at the cross, or like the psalmist before, to cry out with them. God does this over and over, receives them over and over, I have seen it. And every release has restored my spirit, released me from a heavy weight I didn't realize I carried. God is Lord, is shepherd, is the one who sent Jesus our Savior and the Holy Spirit. Our God, who is mighty and strong and all-powerful, God is all of these and just as gentle to us. No matter the darkest valleys we face or the questions and worries weighing us down, God says to all of us in the voice of this psalmist, Do not fear. And Jesus following God's same path of righteousness, gives us the very same message. The message he gave to the women who found Jesus' own tomb empty. Jesus said to them and to all of us, do not be afraid. Say it with me, do not be afraid. For today, for today is this new day of Easter. And if we can say and sing Alleluia, you and I, we can also pray like this psalmist. Notice what we're ranting about, being maybe crabby about, what's weighing us down, and place all of this in Christ's very arms. Jesus wants it all, for that is why he says, do not be afraid. For Jesus this work of being our good shepherd is not new. This role, this vocation for Jesus is in his very DNA, his royal family line. Jesus continues the care and the compassion God first began. In Jesus, the legacy of shepherding God's people carries forward. And so in this season of moments, and holy messages and messaging. When many of us don't feel in control and wish we had more answers and wait for more news to spring up at 2 p.m., 
Do not doubt your ability to live God's message and be God's message. Your ability to share a psalm's worth of lament and faithfulness is there because you have. Bound up in your Bibles and in the depths of your prayers, you have it already before you. And so, we all together are messengers of God's good news. So who can we call this week and wish a happy Easter Alleluia too? Even if you've already done so, who can you call again? Who can you watch John Krasinski's Good News Network on YouTube with and have a laugh cry together? Where is God's compassion and care for you and leading you to be generous, to be even more generous than you were last week, leading you to ask for help even when you'd prefer not? It's okay. Remember what Jesus said. Do not be afraid. That's code for we can do hard things, even when it's called school at home or finals or staying at home. In this very moment, the Lord God is our shepherd for us and with us, for our world, with our world, for the living of these very days, for you right now. We get to live this life with God and with Jesus because of Jesus, our risen Lord. This is our Easter story and the Psalms God's given us to tell, to be God's messengers for this holy moment. Alleluia. Amen. Friends, we bring our offerings to God this morning. Our giving is in response to the blessings we have received from our Creator. You can make a donation through the link to the online giving page to the right. Let us now give to the Lord. Thank you.
Friends, this is the joyful feast for the people of God. To prepare now for our remote celebration of communion together, please have ready bread and wine or grape juice to use for the elements of the Lord's Supper. Friends, indeed, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. They will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. This is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites those who trust him to share the feast which he has prepared. Let us pray. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, creator and ruler of the universe, you created all life and called it good. You formed us in your image and called us to love and serve you. You have continued to love us in all times and places. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Savior. Blessed is Jesus, who was born to be with us. Baptized by John in the Jordan, he lived for you, spoke your truth, showed your love, and gave himself for others in his death. Rising from the tomb, he raised us up to eternal life. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service. Together, we sing the Sanctus. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of bread and wine. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast. Send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. Teach us to befriend the lost, to serve the poor, to reconcile our enemies, and to love our neighbors. Loving God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. We have recalled your mighty acts of holy history. We have seen your power in sending light to conquer darkness, water to give us life, and the bread of heaven to nourish us in love. Send us now with the good news of your grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We who live because he lives now pray together in one voice, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, took bread, and after giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, given for you, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. We are all the body of Christ. As a symbol of this, you may partake of the bread when you are served. Each of us is an individual member of Christ's body. As a symbol of this, please hold the cup and we will partake as one. Let us share the meal now together. And now let us pray together. Gracious God, we give you thanks that by the witness of your word and the sharing of this meal, you have opened our hearts and eyes to the presence of Christ among us. Now send us forth from this place by the power of your spirit to tell this good news to the world. Amen.
Friends, join me in the benediction. We rejoice in the one who leads us beside still waters and gives us refreshment of soul. Christ our shepherd shows us the way we should go so that the name of God will be glorified. Though all manner of evil befall us, we will not be afraid. For the great shepherd of our souls is with us. We are never away from the love and mercy of the Lord, and we shall be with the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.